In this video, I'm going to introduce expletives as well as the extended projection principle. Here's our first sentence. It rained. And the question is, what is it? It doesn't refer to anything in the discourse. It rained. Well, I'm just making a statement that outside it rained. There's, there's no real way to paraphrase what this it is. It's not as if it is referring to outside. It just refers to the fact that an event has occurred and that that event is raining. So the question is, does it have a theta role? In fact, the question is, does rain even have any arguments in this sense? Okay. Let's take a look at another sentence in order to figure this out. It is likely that Bill is dead. This it does not have a theta role. And that is because the theta grid for is likely just takes a propositional CP as a complement. It is likely that Bill is dead. That Bill is dead is the only thing that is likely selects for. There is no theta role to give to it. Similarly, in this first example, there's no theta role that it receives. That is why this is called the expletive it. We stick it into the subject when there is no theta role for anything there. We just shove it in there, it doesn't refer to anything, it's just it. So it does not have a theta role in either of these cases. It is likely that Bill is dead. In fact, we can't even replace this with another noun. We can't say Fred is likely that Bill is dead. That doesn't make any sense. The dog is likely that Bill is dead. We can't replace it with another noun, which we could if this it was not an expletive. For instance, if we said it is happy, let's actually write this down. If we have the sentence it is happy, we can replace this with a noun. We can say Bill is happy. And in this case, this is just a regular it. This is the non-expletive it, because we can replace it with a noun. In the case above, it is likely that Bill is dead. We can't replace this it with a noun, therefore it's an expletive. That's another way of looking at these things. In these examples, it eats pancakes, James loves it. These it's are different because they refer to things in the world. So this refers to something in the world. Maybe this is the person. This is some dude who eats pancakes. It eats pancakes. James love it. Perhaps this it, it is his little doggy friend who... You know, I, I can't draw dogs very well. In fact, some of you may think that this is a pig. Or perhaps if I give it a long fluffy tail, it might be a nice little squirrel. Who knows? But this it refers to something in the discourse, which is different from the expletive it. These also have theta roles. So it here, this is the agent. This is the eater of the pancakes. James loves it. This is the theme. This is the thing that is being loved. So these it's have theta roles, while the previous it, the expletive it, does not have any theta roles. Okay. Now we can introduce the extended projection principle, also known as the EPP. And the idea is that all clauses must have subjects and lexical information is expressed at all levels. What this essentially means is that with a sentence like reigned, for instance, reigned does not assign theta roles to any subject or any object. It doesn't take a subject or object. But what this means is that, well, if if rain doesn't have theta roles, and all DPs need theta roles, then how do we get the sentence it rained? Well, we use the expletive insertion rule. Because of the EPP, we have to have subjects in all of our sentences. But we can't have a regular subject because there's no theta roles to be given. So what we do is we insert an expletive it into the sentence. So if we don't have any theta roles to get, and our verb doesn't assign theta roles, then we insert expletive it. And now we have the sentence, it rained. This is what the EPP is used for. Uh, it's used for other things as well, but this is a good way to introduce it. And really the notion of the EPP comes up a lot. So really the important part here to the slide is not necessarily the expletive it insertion, but to remember what the EPP says. 
And this says that all clauses must have subjects and lexical information is expressed at all levels. The key part being all clauses must have subjects. And when we say all clauses must have subjects, specifically we mean there needs to be something in the specifier of TP, which we will abbreviate as spec TP. So spec TP has to be filled. If nothing can fill it, we shove an expletive in there. And the expletives can either be it or there, depending on the circumstance. So there was a man on the moon. It was devastating. Something like that. Here's a complicated sentence. It appears that James is strong. Here, we have another expletive it. How do we know? Well, we can take a look at the verb appears. And appears selects for a CP complement, but it does not select for any other theta role. There is no subject theta role, or there's no theta role for a subject. Um, we can also take there. So for instance, there appears to be blah, blah, blah. And this is also another expletive there. So we can see here that there's both expletives can work with this verb appears, and there's no theta role for the subject. Therefore, we can use expletive insertion to get it as the subject of the entire sentence of the matrix clause. It appears that James is strong. So that is the EPP and expletive insertion. It's kind of a quick overview, but really there's not much to it. The extended production principle says spec TP must be filled, and these verbs just don't give theta roles to subjects. They only take CP complements. So what do we do? We insert an expletive it that doesn't take any theta roles. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below, and I will do my best to answer them.